In my previous video, I built this super cool telescope. I'm really pleased with the way it came out. It's a lot of fun to use. I can see some really cool stuff with it, but the mount that I have it on, it's a little bit too wobbly. That's not necessarily the fault of the mount itself. It's not really intended for a telescope of this size and focal length. So let's build a better one. Hey, build stuff. Okay, here is my design in SolidWorks. This uses two carbon fiber tubes, some 3D printed parts, and some laser cut aluminum parts. If I change the transparency of the tubes, you can see inside we have NEMA 17 stepper motors with planetary gear drives, and then a 3D printed coupler. And sort of the key piece to this mount is these here. These are harmonic drives or strain wave gear drives, which are kind of all the rage in the astronomy community these days. If you just look at what's commercially available, there are a lot of brands that have a lot of models of mounts all using strain wave gear drives. And the reason for that is they are particularly suited to telescope mounts. Being that strain wave gear drives offer very high torque, very high gear reduction ratio, very high accuracy, and probably most importantly for a telescope mount, zero backlash. So we've got the two harmonic drives, just a few parts to 3D print, some aluminum plate parts that I'll have laser cut and sent to me, and then one aluminum joiner part inside here that I'll have to make on the lathe, which will be a good opportunity to practice my lathe skills. This mount is inspired by a mount designed by Alan Zhao. I will link to his page. Thanks so much to Alan for putting up this good uh, detailed information on his build. And he also has a GitHub, very helpful with his firmware CAD design and the model numbers for the harmonic drives and the planetary gearboxes with the separate motors that he used. So I was basically able to just copy him. Okay, so that's the plan. Let's get to building. I'll start with the carbon fiber tubes, which is also partially the reason for the design is that I already had these tubes. I cut them to length and then I 3D printed these drill guides to help drill the holes in the side. This is not super accurate, but that's okay. I don't really need high accuracy. I just need clearance holes, so this will make it quick and easy and accurate enough. Next up are the Los Mandy style dovetail plate and saddle. The saddle is a generic thing that I bought from Amazon, which looks like it'll work, but I need to drill some holes that will match the bolt pattern on the harmonic drive. With the holes drilled, I then turn to just milling a bunch of slots or holes in this plate because it's pretty heavy and it's got a lot of unnecessary material and I wanna keep the weight uh, down. Although weight's not that important, but I would like to lighten it up a little bit. So let's make some chips. You 
you can see here I was able to save about 100 grams, so that's good. This Lost Mandy style dovetail plate is actually something I machined like way back in 2016, back when I was into astrophotography. It was a custom plate that I made for my astrophotography rig and I saved one of them because I thought, oh, maybe someday I'll use that and uh, well, here we are. Looks kind of ugly, but I saved about another 100 grams off of this part as well. Oh, and let's not forget about the 3D printing. Of course, we're 3D printing some parts. This is my favorite material, the Carbon X, carbon fiber polycarbonate material from 3DX Tech. Well, it's lathe day. I get to make the round parts that fit inside the carbon tube for mounting the mount to the tripod. I'll just go ahead and let you listen to the sounds of the lathe for this part. Okay, I got the OD and the length of this part cut. Now it's time to drill and tap a bunch of holes. The software I'm going to be using to control this mount is OnStep, which is open source telescope control software. There is a groups IO page with a message board, pretty active community, and a lot of documentation. The problem is it's pretty complicated to build. Well, I guess as far as electronics go, it's not that complicated and there's documentation you know, so you can build, build these uh, boards and source the components. Fortunately, this guy, Chad Gray, over at Gray Digital Arts, he builds and sells complete PCBs. So you don't have to worry about any of the sourcing, any of that stuff. I recommend you go this route and just buy it from, just buy it from Chad Gray. He sends it to you at 96 bucks fully assembled. I think that's a pretty good deal. 
Chad also includes with that the firmware that you'll need to upload, including the libraries. Here's the firmware and the configuration. Everything you'll need, you can get from Chad Gray. Definitely recommend ordering from him. Look at this guy here. He'll get you out of the road. Ding. You gonna go climb over there? Oh yeah. Hell yeah, look at that. He's good. He can climb over there. Alright, brother. You have a good day. These are the 3D printed coupler parts that join the stepper motors and harmonic drives to the carbon tubes. Like most parts with this material, they printed really nice. So now we'll install some heat set inserts and they'll be good to go. quick interruption to let you know that I've finally updated my website designbydave.net on there you can find links to download these project files as well as my other projects that includes the CAD documents and other documentation like bill of materials and project notes that you'd need to complete one of these projects successfully these files are free to download it's my way of giving back so if you like that, if you dig that, maybe consider liking the video, subscribing, and there's even the super thanks button down below. You can check that out to help support the channel and my projects. I hope to keep doing this kind of stuff in the future and bringing more of this stuff to you guys. So check it out, designbydave.net. All right, back to the video. Here's my water jet cut aluminum parts from Sen Cut Send. These took a little bit longer because I had them anodized red. I thought that might make them look a little bit cooler. It definitely looks better than the raw aluminum parts. These parts need just a little bit of drilling and tapping and they'll be ready to go. The day has finally come. I have all the parts arranged and it's time to assemble the mount. We'll start with the stepper motors and attaching them to the 3D printed coupling flanges with some M3 screws and a little bit of Loctite. Wanna make sure these don't come loose on the inside of the mount. Next, I have these 3D printed round parts here that will help support the stepper motors on the inside of the tube so that all of the weight isn't just on those flanges. And I use just a little bit of CA glue to help hold these parts in place while I insert them into the tubes.
Next, I insert the wires. This is for the azimuth axis. Kind of fish these through the tubes. That way these wires will be hidden fully inside the mount when it's assembled. And we got six M4 screws around the outside to hold the flange to the tube. This is the bottom aluminum part that attaches the azimuth axis to the mount, the bottom of the mount. And here's the harmonic drive. Look at those, don't those look cool and high tech. The harmonic drive goes on and then there's a little access hole in the flange to fasten the set screw that holds the stepper motor shaft to the harmonic drive. And then we get six more M4 screws to hold the harmonic drive to the 3D printed flange. Next, the plate that will join the azimuth axis to the altitude axis. I'm just checking to see how sturdy and secure it is. And we set that aside and basically repeat this assembly for the altitude axis. Got a nice snug fit here. And install the harmonic drive the same as on the other axis. Uh, also a snug fit. <laughs> Now the 3D printed clamps to join the two axes together. And some long M5 bolts go through these parts and thread into the aluminum plate underneath. Already feeling pretty beefy right here. Now we mount the dovetail saddles that I had to drill holes to line up to the holes in the harmonic drive. This is just a temporary housing for the electronics. At this point, I'm still waiting for my carbon fiber parts to show up from Send, Cut, Send. And now the long M10 screw to fasten the mount to the tripod. Here's my on-step PCB from Chad Gray. The 
tripod I'm using is my trusty Miller carbon fiber tripod, which is a video, photo video tripod I've had for a long time. But I think it will be good enough for a telescope tripod. I'm gonna try it out first before I invest in another one. Okay, very exciting here, getting the telescope clamped on for the first time, snug these two screws down. Take a step back and admire my work. Now here, I'm just trying to get a good idea of how stiff it is. Well, crap, that is a massive fail. These parts are not gonna be strong enough, failed on the layer lines. Gonna need to uh, machine some parts. Oh, what a bummer. <laughs> crap, yeah, it broke right here. Yep. That's definitely not gonna work. So I am not the type to easily be discouraged. What I'm gonna try here is splitting the parts in half so that I can reorient them and print them 90 degrees so the layer lines are going in the optimal direction for the strength of the part. Then I will bond them together with some structural adhesive. I figure it's worth giving this a try before I spend the time or invest a much, uh, or invest a lot of money in machining aluminum parts. With the parts printed, first thing I will do is sand each of the faces to make sure they're nice and flat, but also key the surface so I get a nice good bond with the adhesive. Checking to see that they fit together nice and tight. Using my favorite DP420 adhesive here, a little bit of black dye so it looks nice and black. Here's the finished parts with the heat set inserts installed. They are looking pretty good and I think they're gonna work pretty good. And also during this time, my carbon fiber parts for the enclosure, the electronics enclosure came in. Check this out. Looks much, much nicer than the one piece 3D printed part that I made. Very happy with this. This will look much better sitting out there on the mount. I rushed home and scrambled to get the mount reassembled. I pretty much had to completely disassemble it to get the broken parts out and the new parts reinstalled. All 
I'm reassembling this mount on a Friday night and I really want to get it up and working because Saturday is the new moon and I want to go out up to the mountains to some dark skies and put it to the test. But first I've got to get it assembled this night, tested and confident that it's working before I drive two and a half hours up into the mountains. Time to weigh the mount. You can see 10 pounds, 4.6 ounces, 4.6 kilograms. Not too bad. Okay, here's the mount assembled with a telescope just here in my kitchen. We're just going to do a practice alignment here. Observing sight. And that looks right. Use current location. Oh, initialize. Set date and time. Got the time. Start align. Okay. We're going to pick Altar. And uh, Altar, hit go to. The acceleration is kind of slow. Some they kind of, motors kind of sound like jet engines warming up, which is kind of cool. So it's slowing, and the slow speed is pretty slow. I would like to try to speed that up. For now. It's working and I'm kind of satisfied with it just working. Cat wants to go outside and do some astronomy, right Cat? Okay, well the mount is uh, set up and working. Definitely think there's some tweaks I need to make to the software, but for now I think I'll just live with some of these quality of life things not so great. It has to do with the acceleration and the speed that it slews at. Um, but uh, for now it's working and I think I'll just leave it.
kind of an, always a mad rush to get set up when you get up the mountain. And uh, so, car's ready to go, telescopes are out. Still got some daylight left so I can relax and uh, have some dinner and then um, then it'll be uh, it'll be party time. <laughs> So now with the telescope aligned, what I can do, super cool, you can use Stellarium, the mobile app, and this app, very cool for showing the sky, and then it has telescope control, so it's already set to link up, so I'll click connect, and there we go, it's connected, and it'll sync up here in just a second. But then check it out so it sees where the telescope is pointing. Look at that, it's pointing at this star we just picked. And then we can find a different object. Let's do something uh, kind of not too far away. How about over here in Cancer? Um, yeah, okay, whatever the heck this is, we can click on it. A star in there, and then we hit go to. And I understand because it's daytime, so it thinks there's sun there. And hit go to. And there we go. Now it's moving. So you can see the telescope view moving on the screen here in Stellarium and the telescope slewing over and now if the alignment is correct the object would be there but my go-to alignments my go-to's have not been accurate so I need to work on that kind of figure that out um, but these apps are pretty cool I shot these time lapses with my Insta360 ONE R action camera. Not exactly the best tool for low light time lapses like this, but it looks kind of cool. The software gives you the option to do a normal time lapse like this or a Star Trail time lapse. Curious to know what you guys think, what you prefer. The star trails look kind of cool in the sky, but then down below, it also gives you kind of a neat sort of ghosting thing and gives you sort of an impression of all the action that's happening up there. So this is basically the exact same time lapse, but processed the two different ways. It was a lot of fun up there that night. We had a lot of people around to share the views with, and we were looking at the planets with like Saturn and Jupiter, as well as various deep sky objects like the Andromeda Galaxy, the Dumbbell Nebula, as well as trying to spot some other challenging dark targets. These are not the darkest skies I've ever been under, but it was very nice and very clear, and it was a good night overall.
So I had them out going for the first time for a first proper session last night. It, it definitely needs some work. I, I, I wasn't able to get the alignment really down. Um, even with like a three-star alignment, then the um, the go-to pointing would not be accurate. It wouldn't, wouldn't accurately find a target after telling it to go to. And uh, maybe I just need to read more about that process or it needs to do some tweaking. So that that needs work. But once I did find a target like like a planet like Jupiter or Saturn, it tracked it really well. It would keep it, you know, uh, centered reasonably in a really high magnification eyepiece. So that was nice. It feels sturdy enough, sturdy and stable. Definitely an improvement over the um, the, the previous mount that I had it on. That was kind of one of my, one of my biggest concerns. So that's a good improvement. Another issue is the go-to um, speeds are uh, way too slow. And I, I'm not sure if that's something I can fix in software. I may just be way over geared. So I will look into that. There's also a strange behavior that I think is when, um, when manually guiding, pushing buttons to manually through the telescope. And I think that's mainly related to very slow acceleration and deceleration values, more tweaking. And if, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna want to get the get a hand controller for it using a phone because you don't have the tactile feedback on the buttons is not a very great experience. Definitely some work to do, but um, it worked last night good enough to have a nice uh, astronomy experience, and you know more work to do and you know fun project. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. Still a lot of work to do tweaking and fine-tuning the mount. I'll probably post a series of shorts on that process. These kind of projects are kind of never-ending, always evolving. But that's kind of what I like about this stuff. So consider subscribing, give a thumbs up, all that stuff. I definitely want to keep doing more content like this in the future. And appreciate your guys' support.